Welcome pastors, ministry leaders to this week's Mary the Vision V-Mail. I'm Ron Yutzi, and today I'm gonna share something with you that I do pray, and I pray for you guys and gals, that it's gonna lift your spirit, that it's gonna strengthen you in your relationship with Christ, and that it's gonna bring encouragement to you and your team to unite and pursue the ministry assignment that Jesus has called you to. So I'm gonna continue talking about this exciting journey called ministry. Because your ministry journey is a continual trip with Jesus Christ. He authored it and he's leading it. And for you, as he leads, all of a sudden now he's seeking to bring to you and I to new possibilities and new territory. That's what this journey is going to bring. It's going to bring you to new possibilities that you didn't have before, and you'll occupy new territory that you didn't have. That means more influence. You'll see a broadening of your reach in the community, more members, more attenders coming. You'll see a broadening of your social media, and among other things, that's what you'll see. But it's a journey. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. This journey is going to cause you to travel through some unfamiliar territory which you may have never traveled before. But don't fear, because the challenge before you is going to be to take that step, that one step beyond where you are right now. Just take that step of faith beyond what you've done before, or what will happen is if you don't, you're going to be tempted to revert to what is familiar. And that does not bring you the acquisition of greater territory. It doesn't bring greater influence. It doesn't. As you and I, as ministry leaders, are faithful to follow the leading of God, you will need to honestly address, and I left this last time we were together, you're going to need to honestly address the fears that work within you. And you're also going to have to press through the setbacks and the difficulties that you're going to experience along the way because they are going to come. But as you keep pressing forward, you will experience levels of growth in you and in the ministry that you have previously not encountered before this journey began. See, as you continue this ministry journey with Jesus, here are things that you're going to experience. Let me cover three of them today. Number one, higher levels of faith in your walk with God. Remember, Second Corinthians, we've preached from it. Second Corinthians 5 verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Faith is a walk. Faith in God produces a walk with him, a moving in the direction of obedience to his word, a practicing of biblical principles. Now, as you and I as ministry leaders, and I mean, even if you're serving in a ministry department, you've just gotten involved or just taken the lead of a ministry department. You see, as you and I continue in this walk of faith, because it's required, you haven't gone down that road before, it's going to produce higher levels of faith in us. In other words, your faith in God, your faith in his word, and your faith in his principles will grow. Remember what Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3? We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren. Why? As it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly. Think about it. If faith couldn't grow, he wouldn't have commented on it. You and I are at a level of faith right now, a faith in God based on our experiences with him, based on how deep his word is in our heart, based on how our mind has been renewed by his word so that we're able to prove what his will is. Your faith in God allows you to walk with him in areas where you have absolute trust in him. But here's the other side to that. The reality is your faith has to grow to occupy other areas. So allow that to happen. Don't, I, you could, I've been in ministry now almost 40 years. I don't ever want to have a day where I don't feel like I need the Bible. I don't want to neglect the prayer closet. I don't want to neglect my fellowship with Jesus. No matter how many times I've read the Bible, promises, stories, 
I always seem to find something new when I meditate and read it that develops my faith stronger to take steps that if I'm honest, the real hesitancy I have is, do I trust enough? Am I sure that's God's will? So as your faith grows, it will require you to take steps beyond where you are right now. Number two, what happens on this journey when you take these steps? Not only does your faith grow, but number two, you develop a deeper intimacy with God. Ministry leader, I can't stress this enough. I cannot tell you how many ministers over the years that I have had to walk through them wanting to quit, some wanting to commit suicide, some wanting to deal with things in their life because they, 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 they feel like they, the pressure of ministry all of a sudden was more than they could handle. Hear me, listen. The blessing of all of this is, is this. It's a journey that you and I get a chance to take. But the most important part of ministry is not the assignment and the actions you're doing. It is important. I'm not minimizing it, but it's not the most important. What is your intimacy with Jesus? That's what Mary the Vision is all about. Jesus is the one that gave you the dream. Jesus is the one that has authored the trip. The closer you get to him and you work with your team that they develop their intimacy, the closer that that happens, the more strength, the more faith you have to go on this journey with him. Because on this journey, you are going to learn things about God, about yourself, and even about people that's going to cause you to better know God's heart. It's going to cause you to better understand his ways. That's just wisdom. I'm going to give you an example. I remember when I was going through that building program that I mentioned last time, three years, and we did it debt-free. It was absolutely amazing. It, it was one of the greatest acts of God I've ever seen. But I remember when we began it, the Lord literally said to me, Nehemiah 2.20, and he said, I'm going to bless you. Just obey me. I said, okay. And he said, I'm asking you just to get up and ask the people for, for unity purposes. Would they consider just adding an extra $3 a week to their offering? And I remember saying, Lord, $3 a week is not going to get us a multi-million dollar project done. In, I mean, it'll take God only knows how long. And I remember what he said to me. Trust me and obey me. Do what I ask. I remember doing what I asked. Now, ministry leader, I'm being transparent with you. I remember that particular Sunday, after the service, a couple came up to me, a family, and they said, we're going to be leaving the church. And I went, why? And they said, because have you done the math? Do you know how long it will take us to get this building up on three days? If, if everybody just gave an extra $3? That's ridiculous. And I said to them, I was obeying what God told me to do. And the whole purpose was he just wanted a unity among the people and he would show himself strong. That was my answer. That was the honest answer. I relied on God, the intimacy I had, and I trusted him. Long story short. Now, here we are as we continue that journey four times, four times. I had people, whether they gave in the offering or they came into my office, four times they handed me a six-digit check because they saw the unity. They saw that we were even growing numerically as a result of this. I didn't make it about the money. I made it about our mission, about the vision of Jesus and just and that he'll take care of it. And I only asked him, hey, let's just consider it. Just do what God asked you to do. But right, if you could just add an extra three, because that's what he told me. I don't know what your scenario will look like, but your intimacy with Jesus is going to be the single most critical thing you'll ever have on this journey because he authored the trip and he wants you to stay close to him. He wants you to hear his heart and understand his ways because they may not make sense to you. His ways are different than our ways. Your relationship with Jesus Christ is more important than your assignment from him. The better you know him, the better you know his heart, the better you know his ways, the more effective you will become in your ministry assignment. Remember, he authored the trip. Each growth level in intimacy 
produces an enhanced revelation of God and an enhanced understanding of his ways. Remember Romans 1 verse 17? Paul is writing about how in the gospel, he's not ashamed of it. It's the power of God unto salvation. But then he says that, for in it, in what? In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. What does he mean? Revelation of God comes based on the level of growth that you allow in your life. This revelation of the righteousness of God, he said, is revealed, notice, from faith to faith. It's to bring you from one level to another. And when you're there, you express the confidence in moving forward. As you do that, God reveals more. As you do that in the next, he reveals more. That's how it works. That's why our intimacy as a minister, as a leader, our intimacy with Christ is more important than the assignment I receive from him. Don't take that the wrong way. We don't minimize the assignment. But in order to fulfill, in order to take the journey that he's authored with the number of steps that it's going to require, I have to have that intimacy with Jesus to continue. Number three, greater maturity of the character of Christ happens in you. See, as you continue this journey where you grow in a higher level of faith, your intimacy with Jesus deepens, all of a sudden there's a maturing of the character of the living Christ that happens in you as a Christian and as a leader. Because there is an ongoing maturity of the character of Christ that's taking place in all of us as followers of Jesus. This produces a brighter reflection of the living Christ in our sphere of Influence. Now that means family, church family, the leaders that you serve. If you're a department head leader, a staff member could be the department that you serve in or you serve over. It, it, it's a brighter reflection of Christ in the community that you're a part of and it continues. This maturing of the character of Christ within us was a part of Paul's ministry labor. Remember in Galatians 4.19? my little children, of whom I labor in birth again until Christ is what? Formed in you. God is actually at work in you, minister, in you, preacher, in you, gospel leader. God is actively at work in you. He's at work in me producing what pleases him. He's giving me the desire to do his will and to express his will, to walk it out in our lives. Remember Philippians 2, verses 12 and 13? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation, meaning what God, why? For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. See, I call it the work in, work out principle. God is working something in you. And the reason he's working it in you is because he wants something to be worked out through you to reflect his goodness, to reflect obedience. So my question to you is, when you look at the journey that is in front of you right now, as you begin a new year, maybe you begin a new season of your life, a, a, a new area, you've taken on your department head and you've taken on a new area within the church. My question is, as you look at it, this is what's in front of you right now. How are you facing it? Now, we're going to talk about this more next time we're together, okay? We're going to talk about how do we face these new seasons, these new territories, to be able to fulfill the ministry assignment, continue the journey with Jesus, this glorious ministry journey, walk with him. How do we continue to marry the vision of Jesus in our lives and in our ministries. We'll talk about that more next time we're together. Hey, thanks for taking the time to watch this. Would you do me a favor? Would you share it with another pastor or ministry leader? Somebody that you know that would benefit from the content that we're sharing? Whether you can say, let them know where our webpage is, marythevision.com, and sign up for these so they can get these weekly, or go to our YouTube page where they can subscribe, they can watch these videos as they're uploaded. The only thing about the YouTube page 
that you don't get there that you would get in signing up is every week we have a downloadable PDF with notes that are sent for those who uh, subscribe. And I've had ministry leaders and pastors email me or call me and say, I am using those to preach messages. And it's like, please, they've asked me permission to say, please go ahead, use it. Let it bless you and your congregation or your leadership team, however, okay? So until next week, this is Ron Yutzi. I'm committed to your ministry success in Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching this video. Please take the time, browse other videos on our Mary the Vision YouTube channel. You can help us by subscribing, liking, leaving a comment, and sharing a video. Continue to pursue Jesus.